Hi, Terry here from Stamping Magic. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another in my Create Your Own series. I'm going to show you how I created my simple shaped masking templates and I've used them to create the backgrounds on these three cards. The stamp set I've used to create each of these is the Special Someone stamp set and I've also used the coordinating special day dies. And I'm going to create a version of this first card to show you today. So let's get started. These are all the measurements you need for all the elements required to create this project. So if you're interested in reproducing it, take a screenshot so you can refer to it later. These are the three masking templates that I've used for these cards. So my first one was an oval. My next one was a circle. And the third one was a square. I've created each of the masks so they're six inches square. And I've used acetate or window sheet. Now when you cut your masks you have the centre shape that you remove from the acetate and you don't want to throw this away because you can use it on your cards. You can position it onto your card and then ink blend around it and there's other techniques you can use with them as well so keep them to hand, don't get rid of them. Creating these masks couldn't be simpler. I'm starting with a piece of acetate that measures six inches square and I'm going to centre that on my grid paper. I want to draw lines horizontally and vertically through the centre of the acetate and this will not only help me position the die I'm using to cut the shape centrally but it will also help me position the template on my card when I'm using it. So I'm just using a metal ruler and a permanent ink pen to draw the lines. For my previous templates I used dies from the layering circles, squares and oval set to create them. This time I'm going to use a die from the Hippo and Friends set. Again, the shape is quite simple. Acetate isn't the easiest thing to cut through, so you don't want to try with too complex a shape because it may not cut. All I'm going to do is centre this die onto the acetate and I'm using the grid paper underneath and the lines I've drawn to help me do that. And then I'm going to secure the die onto the acetate with a little bit of washi tape. Now when you run this through, you may need to run it forwards and backwards a couple of times. Check to see if it's cut all the way through. If it hasn't, rotate the acetate and do the same through the other way. Now this one actually cut through really easily. The only one I've had trouble with so far is the square. And now to make a card. Now the technique I'm going to use my template for today is probably the simplest. There are many more things you can do with it. Now I've added a little temporary adhesive to the back of my Whisper White panel and I'm just centering it on the grid paper. And then I'm going to centre my template on top of that. Now for my other cards that I've created, I had the template towards the top, but this one is a little bit longer than the others, so I'm going to centre it instead. Now I can use the lines on the template, together with the lines on my grid paper, to make sure that the template is centred. And once I'm happy, I'm just going to secure it in place with a little washi tape. The ink colour I've decided to use is Highland Heather. Now when I ink blend this panel I like it to be fairly light so I wouldn't normally choose a dark colour. 
and I'm going to apply it using a makeup blending brush. You've seen me use these before when I've done ink blending and this is my preferred method. They work perfectly well with the ink. So I'll pick up some ink from the ink pad and I've just taken a little off onto some copy paper before applying it over my aperture in the template. Now you want to build up the colour gradually. Um, if you're using a light hand with these brushes you will get a perfect ink blend. You won't get any marks like you would from a sponge or a sponge dauber. So just build up the colour to how you would like it gradually. And then you can remove the template. Now you want to clean off the template before putting it away. I just use a microfiber cloth and that removes all the ink. And then it's ready to use another time. This is the special someone stamp set and today I'm using this critter. I think he's a raccoon but I'm not sure. I'm also using one of the flowers and the happy birthday sentiment. I'll be stamping on some normal weight Whisper White card and I'm going to use early espresso ink and crumb cake ink. I'm going to stamp the detail image first of all using early espresso and then the block image I'm going to stamp using crumb cake. If you focus on lining up the eyes first of all and then the body you'll find that this is quite an easy image to stamp. I want to use several colours to stamp the flower so I'm going to ink up the stamp using my Stamping Right markers. I've got Blackberry Bliss, Granny Apple Green and Pumpkin Pie. My stem will be Granny Apple Green. I'll use Blackberry Bliss for the petals and Pumpkin Pie for the centre of the flower. Now most of the time when you're using these markers to ink up your stamp, you use the side of the nib. But if you're doing an intricate area, like the top of the stem, you might want to lightly use the very tip of the nib. But you want to be careful, you don't want to mash the tip and spoil it. The ink from the markers dries quite quickly, even on photopolymer. So before you stamp the image down, give it a huff and the warmth of your breath and the moisture in your breath will reactivate the ink. I'll cut these out using the coordinating special day dies. So there's one for the flower and one for the raccoon. I want my raccoon to look like he's holding the flowers. So I'm going to make two little cuts, one above his little paws and one below. I'm going to open up the cuts using my pokey tool and then I'm going to slide that stem through. It's a little bit fiddly and you can see it looks like he's holding the flower. Now to secure it I'm just going to add a dimensional onto the back. I'll add more later on. I'm going to use my stamper artist to help me stamp the sentiment. So placing the mat in the corner, I'm going to do a dummy run first of all, so I'm covering it with a sheet of acetate. I can then position the stamp and pick it up with the plate. I'll be using Blackberry Bliss ink for the stamping. Now I'm going to ink it up and stamp it onto my acetate sheet and then I'll judge whether it looks in the right position. I'm quite happy with this one so I'm going to leave it. If I wasn't then I would reposition my stamp and try again. So I can now remove the acetate sheet 
ink up my stamp again and stamp it down onto the panel. My card base is in Blackberry Bliss and this is half a standard sheet of card scored in the middle and folded to create a portrait card. Then for inside the card I have a Whisper White mat and I'm going to decorate this with a strip of Highland Heather card onto which I've added a strip of Highland Heather designer series paper. This design is actually retired. Then I have a Highland Heather mat for the front and my panel that I've just created and my image. And that's it, that's my card finished. So a very quick card to create. Now here's another look at my original ones. Now all of these had a card base of Rich Razzlebury. The background colour for this one was Pool Party. The background colour for this one was So Saffron. I kept to the Subtles colours collection for all of these cards. And then for the final one I used Soft Sea Foam. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.